What's up, everyone? Thank you for tuning in to Mana Rant episode 19, the historic podcast. We specialize in the trading card game Magic the Gathering, uh, with emphasis on the historic format, with a little splash of commander as well. I'm your host, and dear diary, can I please win the card game today? My name is Michael Apollo, and as always, he appears to be sober, but most likely he's Johnny walking with someone. It's Hoshi. <laughs> it's only temporary, but hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> and uh, uh, he's time spiraling his money down the toilet on secret layers. It's Drunken Dork. Not this time, Wizards. Not this time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the way our show works is we actually follow the phases of magic. So we have our untap, upkeep, draw, main phase one, combat, main phase two, end step, cleanup, and discard. And just like every game of magic, you always start off with your untap step. And that is where we open a drink and talk shortly about what we're drinking tonight. So let's untap her up. Um, this week I am drinking, I'm going a little ho ho holidays, uh, this week, some Pennsylvania Dutch eggnog, um, some strong eggnog, I will say, uh, rum, brandy and blended whiskey. And of course, um, that delicious heavy cream. Um, so should be pretty strong. We'll see. Drunken dork. What are you drinking this week? So due to some technical difficulties, this is our our second bit of recording here for this episode. So I already opened the beer. I already started drinking it. And uh, it's a delicious beer from Breakside. And they uh, collaborated with a local like hipster ice cream shop called Salt and Straw to make this very yummy salted caramel Mm. stout. And it is delicious. And uh, looks like Mr. Wizard got his uh, son's first uh, <laughs> chemistry set. Well, what, what, are you, what are you concocting over there? <laughs> uh, so this is a chai tea hot toddy. So hot toddy is like a hot version of an old fashioned, which is m- one of my favorite drinks. And so this is a hot version of it, but the hot version is not very good. So we did a chai tea version of it instead of just the hot water that they put in. And it is, mwah, it is, it's beautiful uh so it's just a a hot uh rye whiskey and some cinnamon sticks and uh an orange peel and then the chai tea and some uh you know uh some cream and mm, 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 nice 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 hot drink for these cold times (laughs) that's right (laughs) hey you be careful i see through your (laughs) i see through, through your cloak your veil of summer uh, you can put as much chai and orange peel as you want. Your uh-huh. your eyes are going to yeah. be spinning in about twenty minutes. So, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I'm a gentleman right now with my tea. You know, I'm like an cool. Englishman. <laughs> All right. Well, cheers, boys, and let's mm-hmm. get this show started. Cheers. Mm. All right. So after our untap is always followed by our upkeep. Now I'm going to turn it over to Hoshi, and he's going to tell us what this week's Reddit rant is. All right, guys. So Reddit rant is where I scour the Internet for insane people like myself uh, ranting on the Internet. This is mana rant. So let's find some good Reddit rants. And this week, I think I got a good one. It is uh, much briefer uh, and a little more insane than last week's. Uh, So this is titled Arena Updates Nightmare. So I must confess, I don't play arena much at all largely due to not particularly enjoying the meta, but once in a blue moon, I think to myself, I really just fancy a quick game and a bit of background telly. (laughs) Telly. (laughs) And on every single one of these sobering occasions, the minute I click on the app, I get a one to two gigabyte update. Then on top of this, off there's an apparently a two to three gigabyte update to follow once I log in. Seriously? <laughs> I, <laughs> I live in an area with about a 20 megabit internet, meaning these updates for me up to the next hour, I won't be playing the app and often just give up putting the problem off until next time. Why does this app not update itself, uh, keep itself up to date? Why are these downloads uh, behind <laughs> behind the login? Arg! Uh, and then he quickly has, uh, comments afterwards. And then after two hours of updates, I find the decks that I enjoyed playing have now left standard and are invalid. Wah, wah. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so what do you think, Dragon Dork? Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to point out 20 megabits a, a fucking second or whatever. Holy shit, man. You got you to gotta <laughs> step out of fucking Euro land and come to fucking somewhere where they have actual interwebs, you know? Get off the dial-up, man, and uh, get some real internet. But yeah, I mean, I always like a good sob story. So uh, yeah, this is pretty, it's pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of factors in play. I mean, this is a ever-growing app. Uh, Wizards has stated multiple times they're trying to update backwards and forwards. That's a lot of cards, a lot of interactions, a lot of rules. It's uh, going to be a big update. Uh, a lot of algorithms for them to uh, take note of. But, yeah, I'm sorry. That sucks. You have shitty internet. That's that's bad. <laughs> yeah. 20 that's megabits. That's bad, yeah. Uh, sorry. Sorry for you. And, um yeah, I hope I hope you're able to get some faster internet because there's no way you can enjoy the game no. uh, without it. <laughs> you're probably one of those people pissing me off when I'm playing on the other side of you. Like, what the fuck is this person doing right now? You know, like, and it's really just their internet speed. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking that they're like roping, but in reality, it's just yeah. like they're trying to like play Land of War Elves, and they're like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Why isn't it working? <laughs> Yeah, this is a Mr. Dapple Yard. Uh, so, I mean, the first thing I thought when I read this was like, is this guy posting on like literally every app that he had? Because I don't know about you guys, I'm just updating everything all the time, it feels like. And it's always like two to three gigabytes every time I turn on Xbox or something. So, yeah. is, this, is this guy just like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> every time he's, he's just in a constant state of downloading. Yeah, so... Mr. Dalbyard, uh, I think we all three agree that it's really not the game, dude. It's it's your internet. Uh, sorry, yeah. brother. Uh, you gotta update that thing. Uh, you know, get some get some satellite. Uh, hit up Elon Musk. He'd be doing that uh, Starlink deal pretty soon. That should be uh, that should that should be all right. <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll go but, to uh, the fucking farmlands of England and help you out. <laughs> Yeah, but like uh, like every week, uh, this Reddit rant will be down in the uh, in the video description if you guys want to check it out and give them a, a up or a down vote. You know how Reddit do. And uh, Mr. Dappleyard, you are one insane lunatic, and uh, we love you. So that's it for All Reddit right. rant. Back to you. And and that is uh, our Reddit rant, our upkeep. And after that is always followed by our giraffes. And that's just real quick, which magic formats we've been playing this week doesn't have to actually be something magic related. I'll say that. So I'll turn it over to Drunken Dork. What have you been doing this week in magic? So this week I've been playing historic, playing my budget deck still. And then also I've been building a new commander deck, uh, which is one too many. But I, you know, after opening that commander legends, I, I saw these two cards, uh, which are, I'll read them real quick. It's a rag, uh, or rog rack son of raga, and it is a zero cost <laughs> zero one. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. And it has partner. And it has first strike menace and trample, which is pretty good, right? Like I want to, yeah. I want to build an equipment deck based around him. And then this other one is uh, Falthus uh, Shadow Cat Familiar, which is commanders you control have menace and death touch. So like to get, you know, nice. this zero cost commander could have first strike, menace, trample, death touch, and menace again. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> double yeah, menace. I, <laughs> yeah, so I kind of just want to like build a really fun deck out of that. I have so many Voltron commanders. I don't need more, but I fucking love Voltron. <laughs> yeah. And Rakdos, that's a cool color combo and uh, commander yeah. damage matters, you know. That's that's something you don't see too often. Uh, usually Voltron's built in a in a different way. So, it's pretty unique. I like it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh Hoshi, what about you? Uh, yeah, so I've had an insane week, so I've barely been able to play Arena. I'll get maybe like two or three games in a day, but then I, I've been updating my uh, Explore deck, which I have been uh, lovingly named Explore My Asshole, and <laughs> that makes me laugh every time I see it, <laughs> so, so it makes me want to click on it every time, and it, it's great, man. Uh, I mean, Explore package is just amazing, and then, you know, every time Bull Citadel hits the battlefield, uh, it just goes off. It's usually game over at that point, you know, I'm just like casting so many things and getting so much life with uh, Aether Flux Red of war and the uh the wild growth walker and everything that i easily hit 50 life pretty quick um 
And I've been putting corn in there because I've seen other versions where they run cocoa, but I switch it up and I put corn in instead because I think corn is just so good in the meta right now because of uh, all the artifact decks and it shuts down their artifacts. It lets me grab Bola Citadel out of the sideboard. It, you know, it takes one more turn, but it's totally worth it. So yeah, I've been I've been really liking that deck. It's so much fun. Really cool. Sweet. Um, as as for myself, uh, I play a little bit more on the competitive side of things. So best of three. Um, this season I was able to reach up to diamond. Now I'm back into gold. So just climbing the ranks again, using my soul type mid range and team or Marvel decks. Um, I was messing around with gruel for a while. Well, it is a very powerful deck and, uh, I'll swear by gruel. I mean, that's, that's one of the very first things I've played since I was a kid. Um, I think in this current meta for best of three in historic soul tie and teamer are geared a little bit better. Um, mm. only in the sense of that, uh, board wipes and stuff can really mess up gruel or aggro in general. If you're not getting those super fast wins, um, I think they're geared better for best of one. I could be wrong, but you know, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to do for this season. And after our draw phase is going to be our main phase. So our main topic for tonight is tips for new historic players. Uh, no matter what background you're coming from, if you're coming from a new TCG, you've been playing standard your entire life and you've only just now heard of a uh, historic, whatever your mm -hmm. background is, these are going to be some tips from us for you, um, how to best approach this beloved format. So I'm going to turn it over to Hoshi and, uh, what tips do you have for new historic players? Uh, well, first of all, be rich, uh, be super duper <laughs> rich and then put, <laughs> put about two thousand dollars into the arena and then boom just money you got it you got it all maybe you probably won't even have it all uh but no on a serious note uh make sure that you get a good budget deck first to start off with when you're going into historic you don't want to dive in and just grab one of the top meta decks uh even if you're like have a pretty good uh deck and standard you know when you're first getting in uh there's a lot the the good thing about Historic is that there's so many budget decks. Uh, we did, a, a, I think, two episodes ago, episode 17, we did our top three budget decks that we came up with, and they're all very cheap to make. They all work very well. I mean, uh, Paulo's is a little, like, you know, glass cannon-y. But, uh, yeah, they're, I mean, they're great decks, though, and they're super easy to get. Uh, and then grab those and just jump into Historic and start playing and actually see what the meta is like and what kind of decks are out there. You can look at the decks on the deck lists on all the websites and stuff but you really don't know what they play like until you're actually playing against one and that's when i really realized that the decks that i want to play too you know is when i'm playing against somebody i'm like that deck that just kicked my ass looked like a lot of fun and then maybe that's you know fits my play style or something and then that's the one that i that i'll end up usually making is something that i think is going to be fun this is a you know a game we're supposed to have fun with it so uh you know if for you being fun is just net decking the top deck and then winning then then do that but for me you know i think it's about just getting the deck that's right for you and the only way you're going to find that is by actually playing a bunch of games at historic and then do it with budget decks so you save your wild cards uh yeah so that's my top tip and and that's a good one and let's go ahead and uh preface this by saying also that all three of us play magic very differently um mm. i would probably say that drunken is more on the like hybrid side he does a lot of like climbing the ladder with best of one and best of three but also enjoys uh more casual where hoshi is definitely like you would agree probably just full casual right like less on the ladder side so uh and and me being like full competitive best of three only so with that being said you know take uh take hoshi's tips because if competitive is not your thing these are also really great tips for this as well um, this does mm -hmm. not have to be competitive only. And Hoshi made a great point. If you just want to play and enjoy the game, um, historic is one of the best ways to do that. Um, and Hoshi made a very fantastic point on that. With that being said, let's turn it over to Drunken Dork. What tips do you have for new historic players? So I think the title of this, uh, this episode should be called Just the Tip. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah youtube will love, love that <laughs> all right uh but yeah so uh to be serious so a tip uh that i think is very important when getting into a new format like this where your card pool is super deep it's really easy to spend uh wild cards like in in, in even in standard um so i think it's good like if you're going to like 
you know, it's good to find a deck you like, like Hoshi said, it's good to find a play style you like, but if you're going to start investing your wild cards in into something, I think it's really important that you start actually with your mana base. Uh, because your mana base is probably like uh, the most versatile thing you can have in magic. Like you can use your blue white lands in like a tri-color deck. You can use it in a, a two-color deck. You can use it in a five-color deck, you know, like, so they go a lot further than say something like, I don't know, like Uro, even though Uro's fucking probably goes in every deck at this point, <laughs> you know, in yeah, historic, but, mm -hmm. but, you know, they really do like, um, so I think it's really important that like when you start and you start spending your wild cards that you start with something like, uh, yeah, getting your lands, getting your mana base, right. Uh, because it's, it's actually way more powerful than, um, than a lot of other cards uh, that you could potentially get in like two and three color decks um, because you can't do shit if you don't have the lands, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, exactly. and, and, one, and another tip I have, this is kind of a goof, but um, yeah, don't be a fucking drunken idiot like us three. Get hammered <laughs> and then just build, wild, build decks with like all the wild cards you have and then wake up the next day and then uh, you, you know, all of a sudden you have no wild cards. Because that has definitely happened to, I think, every one of us. At least me and Apollo. I don't know about Hoshi. Mm, I play better when oh. I'm drunk. Yeah, oh. that, that is true. <laughs> oh, the you guys Cruise. witnessed it. <laughs> it's annoying. It's annoying as hell. Because yeah. I'll like pretend like I'm sipping and I see your eyes like going in different directions. You're making these dumb big brain plays. And I'm like, how? Like, how? How do yeah. you even see what's going on? Yeah. You're like tapping your mana. Like, oh, He's whoopsie, like doing whoopsie. this. He's like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking like my board state's his. Like, oh, yeah. God. It's annoying. <laughs> but um, no, another excellent point from Drunken. And uh, yeah, to like add on that, like, Drunken is completely right. Your mana base is going to carry you very far, especially when you get into more eternal formats. The mana bases aren't changing. There might be new lands that come in. However, for something to be better than like a fetch or a shock, is it going to be too uh, likely? Um, maybe control would like a lot more utility lands or a different kind of strategy. But no matter what you like to play, if you want to play aggro one week, you can play Azorius Flyers. Or if you want to shift into a control, well, there you go. You already have the Azorius lands. So your mana bases will carry you far. And um, yeah, don't do what I do. Like, you know, yeah, the Panharmonicons are fun. The Aetherworks Marvels are fun. But those rares are gone. And when the meta shifts and defeats them, uh, they're nothing but a pet deck at that point. And those yeah. rares could have been used for something that will stand the test of time. And with that being said, my tip for new historic players is more on a competitive end for myself i used to play heavily in tournaments in standard and then i found out about modern and i absolutely fell in love with modern and one of my uh first decks i ever made with modern was living end which is a kind of like a janky combo but a very powerful one um that attacked the modern meta game very well um and with that i think it's wise to take like your standard deck you already have so much put into it. There's no, there's no reason to like just throw that in the trash or digitally, you know, erase that deck and then try to start with something fresh. Build on the ideas that you already have, and then slowly uh, get it to where you want it to be tuned. A good example of that is something that's really good in standard currently is Gruel Adventures. Gruel Adventures has been um, very powerful for a very long time, and a lot of those rares um, could you can use them in historic. And then not only are you able to kind of like do the same game plan, but then you're able to use the rares in a more efficient way. Something like Drunken has stated, you're able to get the Gruul mana base, like the Cragtown Pathways, the, the Stomping Grounds, the Rootbound Crags, or whatever they're called, um, and be able to get that mana base set and uh, ready. And then a lot of the cards like Gruul Spellbreaker, you know, uh, Robber the Rich, they're, 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 that's what the Gruel deck uses, you know, Ember Cleave. So you're setting yourself up for more success um, if you transfer a standard deck into Historic and then slowly build up on it to an idea or a archetype that you are eventually trying to reach. So um, with that being said, do you guys have any uh, final thoughts for anyone out there? Yeah, uh, so to add on to Drunken Dork's comments about the lands, so if you're hopping into Historic, there's a ton of different lands that are available to you in there, and there's definitely a ranking of which lands you should get first 
Uh, and I, I saw a list of it somewhere and I totally agreed and, uh, I can't find it right now, but, uh, number one was the shock lands, I think yeah. are the, are the yeah, best yeah. lands that you should get. And if you don't know what those are, yep. uh, they're lands that have two different land types. So it'll be like a forest in a uh, mountain and then you have to pay two life and it can come in untapped, uh, or you can pay nothing and have it come in tapped. So it's very, it's super versatile. Uh, yeah. Shock lands. And then followed by those are what they call the buddy lands which are if you have a land that it matches one of the two colors uh, of the color identity, like a mountain or a plains or something like that, if you have one of those, it'll come in untapped. Uh, and then below there, I think it's the fast lands that just came out in Kaladesh or the next tier below that one. Yeah, those are Is good. That you Makes guys sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that, that would make sense, and, yeah. Uh, and these are all rare lands. Uh, yeah. And then... And then there's the, uh, the the probably the triomes and then maybe the scry lands I think but yeah you should work on getting at least the shock lands and the buddy lands first and that's gonna that's gonna take a lot of wild cards to it, get those it does but they're invaluable they are invaluable to have and they're gonna it's the bang for your buck like you were talking about absolutely they're always gonna be useful yeah, yeah. I mean that that is definitely like out of all the cards that I have. Um, I use those more than any, you know, I do have mono decks like my budget decks or like my mono red burn, you know, obviously I don't have shock lands in there, but like every other deck has shock lands and buddy lands. And the thing is they go perfect mm -hmm. together. They just go hand yeah. in hand. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Absolutely. It, and every it's like, deck uh, I have, that's eight, re eight lands right there. Right. You know, the stomping <laughs> grounds and the rootbound crags. Mm -hmm. Like wh yeah. why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. I, I always, uh, compare it to buying tires. You know, getting your lands is like getting tires for your car. It's it's sucks, nobody likes you know? it. Yeah, like, it, yeah, it's not an exciting thing to get. You're like, yeah, yeah. I got lands, right? But they're super important to the yeah. game. You can't go anywhere without your tires. You know, yeah. you gotta get them, uh, and then you can build your badass race car on top of those. You know, but yeah. you, gotta, you gotta get them tires first, boy. <laughs> that's a good analogy. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. That is good. I think that's like kind of mm -hmm. funny too because of the Zendikar Rising lands. Like, it, like mm -hmm. one side will have like a creature on it, like Kazandu Mammoth, and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. but but this oh, yeah. one has a creature side. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. it does something. Because mm -hmm. I completely agree, dude. Every time a new set comes out, it's just like my like little boy. I want the new toy. Is like I just want mm -hmm. all these like silly cards that are probably never going to yeah. be used. And then the other mm -hmm. side's like, no, get the lands. You know you're going to need them and complain about them later. So, <laughs> Dude, that that is yeah, like definitely. with me, anytime a new set comes out, I'm like, ooh, what cool lands are coming out. I don't like, I don't know why. I get excited <laughs> about them though. You, mana base is so important, right? So like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm always excited to see new lands in, uh, in Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so that is it for our main phase. And after our main phase is always followed by our combat. Um, Sultai mid range. It's, uh, something that's been talked about quite heavily. We've talked about it, uh, quite a few times on this channel. It just mm. doesn't seem to go away. And there's good reason for that. It's a crazy good deck. Um, and so we're going to talk about how do you beat this strategy in best of one and best of three. So before I turn it over to the boys, I'm just going to like very quickly, like, what is this deck trying to do? Well, essentially it's, the literal epitome of what a mid-range deck is trying to do. Very powerful creatures um, that have utility that either refuel, you feel the hand, uh, give some life, giving some staying power. Um, very powerful planeswalkers that also affect the battlefield immediately. And a shit ton of sorceries and um, instants that get rid of your opponent's stuff. So that way they can uh, stall out the game in their favor and um, be able to do what they want to do. Now, mostly mid-range um, in the past has problems with control, but mm -hmm. the problem with historic Sultai is that it has blue, and in the sideboard, it could also counter. So it could also stop control from being control, and it can turn itself into a control deck, uh, essentially. Mm -hmm. We're not going to talk about like a deck list or whatever. I'm sure a lot of you have seen it out there. If you have not, um, you know you can check the description on our YouTube, and we'll put up a, like a basic Sultai list that I have. Um, but uh, yeah, first impressions of this deck, and maybe some ideas of how to beat it. Let's uh, let's turn it over to Hoshi. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> 
Yeah, so this is a this is a very difficult deck to defeat. I feel like if they get a, a a good opening hand, definitely. Even if they don't, there's just so many things that work in so many different angles on this deck, and it, it's very versatile. Uh, so I've been hearing a lot of people bitching about this, or not hearing, but reading. <laughs> you know, on my my Reddit tours, I've seen a, an increase in people complaining about this. So that's why I thought this this would be great for us to uh, to try and take apart because Nissa I think is one of the main problems in this deck and I mean people have been screaming about Nissa ever since the card has came out it is a five drop planeswalker that you can get out early they're running growth spiral in this deck I, every build that I've seen runs growth spiral uh, so they're getting this out at least turn four I'd probably say is is consistent yeah. with this deck especially with Uro maybe turn three and nah, probably not turn three but at least turn four and then Nissa is just I mean, it's so ridiculous to deal with once it's on the board. Um, so that thing's going to beat you to death. So you can take care of all the other little problems with this deck, but she just allows that top end to really come down and take off. So what you need to do is not die uh, before <laughs> before this deck kills you, which this deck doesn't kill you super fast. What this deck does is it tears apart aggro decks, though. Just looking at it, it has... Uh, uh, really, the thought sees is a problem because uh, it tears apart your opening hand, and then it kills your creatures. So I think this just shreds aggro strategies uh, pretty well. So aggro is not the way to go about this deck. Uh, taking it out, the thing that I really think works well against this deck is combos. I'm not seeing any counter spells in any of the versions of this deck besides in their sideboard, and usually they're running like one or two negates, maybe. So not a lot. So I think combo strategies actually stand a pretty good chance of beating this deck uh something like um teamer spells of citadel teamer spells yeah exactly teamer spells is good uh even the uh the neoform combo which isn't super consistent uh but i think even that combo if they get it off this deck doesn't have really a way of interacting with that uh, so if a combo goes off, I mean, there's a ton of combos in historic right now. I think those stand a really good chance of beating this deck because this deck is kind of just jerking itself off besides, uh, it killing your creatures. So if you're not running a creature based strategy, they're really wasting a lot of cards, uh, that they have in their hand that are probably dead a lot of the time. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think combo is probably going to be the best way to, to take this deck out. Okay. So we have a combo from Hoshi. Drunken Dork, uh, what do you think about taking down this uh, historic list? So I want to make a, a like a statement here about this deck. Uh, looking at this, so like the deck list that you have here, and it looks pretty similar to like if you look online, a lot of them look like. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like actually standard um back in like may or you know june you know it <laughs> mm -hmm. uh you know nissa hydro crisis uro yeah. um yep. casualties of war mm -hmm. uh, extinction event yeah like these are maybe not maelstrom pulse and not thought seize, but you know no. uh, eliminate fatal push uh, fail push was that in wasn't there. in Gross there gross spiral <laughs> yeah so uh, spiral, like yeah. there's very few cards in here that like really weren't in um we weren't in standard besides like some of the lands right and um it's true yeah it's it, this is a tough tough deck to play against especially in best of three i mean there's a reason mm -hmm. it's at the top and it's dominating the top it's because well one it's just a powerful deck to start with and two the sideboard just makes it like it just puts it over the top you know with like turning this into a like a more control style deck like being able to deal with things like even more aggressive strategies it really helps this deck like i'd say in best of one the best thing you have against this is like a mono red burn build because like things like uh thoughtsies can really hurt you when you're playing against burn in best oh, of one it's true um but even then like fucking uro is like the bane of my <laughs> existence when i play burn um yeah and, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I really don't know what a good strategy against this is, except, like, fuck, just playing the fucking mirror, man. <laughs> That's it. Playing the mirror and playing it better because this is an incredibly good deck. This is, like, this is one of my favorite styles of deck to play. I think it's amazing. Um, looking at it, I just, I need to go in and start playing best of three more often and play this shit because this is a, this is a beast, right here mm. yes yeah 
Um, I, I played this deck heavily. Uh, I've played this deck when it was in Standard. It was one of my first decks I made in Historic. And you're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. It it doesn't gain too much from Kaladesh, but the cards it does gain just make it even more powerful. Um, you know, mm-hmm. Fatal Push being the most important one, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But something to take a note. Um, the, the, the problem with Soul Tide Midrange is that well, okay, aside from something else, which I'll touch on in a little bit later, there is no deck that just defeats this deck. Um, yeah. And you might be listening and like, well, that's disheartening or, you know, that's <laughs> that's not cool. Like, well, I, I thought you guys were going to talk about how you defeat it. Well, you can defeat it, but you're mm-hmm. actually always on the back foot. Now, uh, to disagree with Hoshi, I, I, Aggro actually is good against Sultai. If Soul Tide doesn't have the things, you know, yeah. if if and, and if you're able to get in that no, mass amount of damage by turn three, turn four, uh, there's nothing they can do. Um, something to add into what Drunken has said, Shocklands and Thoughtseize also uh, devastates them. Uh, that life loss to gain the edge on the colors they need can also be very destructive to them. But um, here's the problem with that. That that's dependent on if you have your god hand or a a very like decent hand and they just don't have a good hand at all. If they're on the more dirtily plan where it's like turn two gross pile, turn three Uro, and they're kind of like waiting around to maybe get a Nissa out, hoping that they get some kind of like uh, board wipe, like extinction event. That's your chance. That is your only chance to uh, take advantage of Soul Tide midrange and to defeat them. And I think the two decks that do this the best are Goblins and Gruul. Um, I don't think other aggro decks are well positioned. Not to say that they're not good, because Auras is actually very good against Soltai. But once again, if Soltai doesn't have the things, because Extinction Event just ruins yeah. Auras. Like, it just mm-hmm. devastates Auras. So they're already like two steps ahead of whatever you're trying to do. So the only thing you can do is try to like negate them in some way to where you're on even grounds. And then when you're on even grounds with them, you have to just play better. You have to, because if you, if you give them any kind of chance, Soltai will run over you and uh, take over the game. Another aspect I want to mention is that their sideboard. So a lot of aggro strategies, um, I think are geared towards best of one. Like they're just like a better game one deck. Mm Mm-hmm. Goblins suffers games two and three when it has to sideboard and take out some key pieces and take away from its plan, right? If it needs to put in like a braid against Team or Marvel or other cards that it doesn't want to take away from its Muxus plan, then it's it's climbing an uphill battle. Where Soltai gets better after sideboard. Ah, I just take out the things I don't need and put in the things I do need. I'll put in Graft Digger's mm-hmm. Cage and Cry of the Carnarium. Or, you know, Disdainful Stroke against Big Boy Plays, Aether Gust against anything red and green. You know, it just has all the things. So it's a very, very difficult deck. Um, I, I will say, like I said, aggro has a chance, but you need Soul Tide to Dirtle. But I would say I'm going to have to agree with Hoshi. Um, I, I think the best way to defeat Soul Tide is actually combo, more specifically Team or Marvel. Uh, Team or Marvel can battle them very well. And uh, if you guys haven't, be sure to check one of our gameplay vids. Uh, I take uh, Team or Marvel for a spin, and I show like how to play that deck. A lot of people go in on the all-in combo, which I think is the incorrect way to play Team or Marvel. You need to play mid-range as well. Uh, combo needs to be secondary. If you can get the combo, go for it, right? But if you don't got the combo, you need to go on. You need to shift gears very quickly. I mean, Soul Tide just plays that strategy better, right? So, in a sense, why don't you just play Soul Tide? Well, maybe I don't want to play Soul Tide, right? Like, maybe I want to beat Soul Tide. I don't want to be a part of the crowd that always plays Soul Tide. I want to actually defeat the deck. And uh, I think that's probably the best way currently in best of three. Um, I don't know. Oh, let's flip it back to Hoshi. Do you have any other thoughts? Yeah, I do. I wanted to go more with combo because I think that's more of a broad range. There's a lot of different options with combo. Uh, The secondary way that I thought was good to beat this deck was uh, Azorius Control. Uh, I think Azorius Control actually stands a very good point against this deck. The main problem that Azorius Control has against this deck is Nyssa. 
Uh, so as long as they can counter the Nissa and stop it from coming in, then Azorius Control has a very strong, uh, you know, foothold against this deck. It has a lot of targeted removal, which does absolutely nothing against Azorius Control. They just sit there, counter stuff, get to ferry and all that. They 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 can't do anything against that. Uh, so I think as long as Azorius Control just stops Nissa from coming down, which is you know, hey, do you have the counter at that time to stop that? Because they're doing a lot of other stuff too, and maybe Graft Digger's Cage. They would have to also have that to stop Uro because Uro is also very good against uh, Azorius Control, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. they're wasting their counter spells on doing everything, but that doesn't matter if you're throwing a bunch of stuff in the graveyard and then you can just get more value out of Uro and keep recasting him. That'll wear out the Azorius player. So they have to be able to stop Uro somehow and stop Nyssa. If they can do that, which Azorius can, as long as they get the right hands and they play it correctly, uh, I think they can easily beat this deck. But yeah, that's a very narrow way. Uh, it, and you have to be a good Azorius control player to beat this, uh, which is, it's a hard deck to pilot, you know, you have to make very correct decisions. So it, it's yeah. a lot easier to play soul tie control <laughs> to play soul tie yeah. mid range than it is Azorius control. Yeah. yeah. It's like chess, right? You're like, you're thinking mm -hmm. five moves ahead and do I counter this? Is it worth it? Do I not care about it? Do I wait for them mm -hmm. to drop Nissa? You know, a lot of things in, in play there. Uh, Drunken, do you have any other uh, thoughts or final thoughts on this? I mean, I agree with Hoshi uh, that, yeah, yeah. It, counter, I think counter spell is like the most uh, complicated card in Magic the Gathering. Like when to play it, how to play it, you know. And uh, But uh, I am going to say like best of one. I think, I do think Mono Red Burn is the best way to beat this deck in best of one. Um, uh, or maybe goblins man extinction event is just such a bitch of a card mm -hmm. um super good but i do think in best of three i do think actually the best way to beat this is just with the mirror honestly like i mean i'm sure there are better ways to beat it like i'm sure combo is a better way to beat it but the unfortunate thing with combo is that after you play this deck you have to play goblins and then after you play goblins, you have to play auras, mm. and that deck doesn't necessarily fare well against those two other strategies. So I think like mm -hmm. this is the deck to be in best of three. This is an incredibly powerful deck. It's like it's like goblins is in best of one. You know, it's just really really good. Um, you have bad games, but at the end of the day, your games will probably, if you're a good player or a decent player, will be good more than they are bad in best of three. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, you're completely right. And for sure, this is the deck to beat in best of three. Um, correlating to what Hoshi said, there might be a lot of people, um, you know, you out there that have seen this in, Sult uh, in best of one. I, I honestly have never seen this in Sultai or in best of one uh, Sultai mid range. But um, if you are, that sucks. Like, that's just Arena's algorithm, I think. <laughs> you know, they're like Shuffler. They're just like, we're going to. Yeah. Like, fuck you over today you know yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah it does that because like <laughs> according to a lot of like sources um on the current metagame the usual suspects are the best in best of one the new mono red burn chandra burn goblins auras gruel you know um they're they're there and i think they have a better game one plan which what best of one is so um yeah, that's our main or that's our combat. Let us know in the comments below. How do you guys deal with Soltai mid range? Are you a Soltai mid range player? Um, how do you combat the uh, ever growing meta and everyone coming for you? So let us know in the comments below. Give us the thumbs up if this is your kind of thing and you dig it. And um, moving on, we're going to go into our main phase two, my absolute favorite phase, uh, <laughs> the horseshit card game. <laughs> or the Dear Diary, Not Again game. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Drunken Dork, and he's going to tell us how we're going to play. So I said going forward, if you guys enjoyed it, uh, that I was going to be opening a pack every week, and then I'd make a card and open the pack and pick three three real cards, and then, you know, I'd have my fake card. And so, uh, yeah, I'm going to start doing that. And uh, unfortunately this week, I... I didn't uh, get a chance to go to a store and buy a pack, but I do have jumpstart packs in my house. The complicated thing is you can't just make a fake card and open a jumpstart pack because they have like mono white, mono red, mono green. So oh, yeah. I had to oh, yeah. open the pack and like uh, there's a pack inside of a pack, right? So basically I opened a pack and I got the predator um, style. Do you guys remember jumpstart? Like how that yeah. works? Okay, so I am yeah. going to open this. 
And uh, so basically what it is, what this game is, is I open, I guess, cards, or I name four cards, and it's up to these two drunken idiots to figure out which one of these cards is fake. So I'm gonna pick three cards real quick, and I already have my fake one um, pulled out. So I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna take that, and I'm gonna take um, that one. And we'll see how well-versed uh, these two are with Jumpstart, okay? Oh, please, Ooh. please. <laughs> <laughs> So let me lay these <laughs> out like and move my mic just a little bit so I'm not crinkling around this fucking uh, piece of mail that I, I wrote the fake card on. Um, <laughs> okay. So my first one is Brindle Shoat. It is one and a green. It is a creature boar at Uncommon. And it says when Brindle Shoat dies... Create a 3-3 three, three green boar creature token. And it is a 1-1. One, one. Okay? Mm. Uh, my second card is Nightcat Hunter. It is green, green, green. It is a creature cat at Uncommon. It has flash. It says when Nightcat Hunter enters the battlefield, it fights target creature and opponent controls. And it is a 3-3. Three, three. Okay? My third card is Fungal Rebirth. It is two and a green. It is an instant at uncommon. It says return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If a creature died this turn, create two 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature tokens. All right, and then the final card, uh, Dawn Treader Elk. It is one and a green, a creature elk at common. And it says, pay one green. Sacrifice, uh, sacrifice Dawn Treader Elk. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it into the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. And it is a 2-2. Two -two. So last week I started with Hoshi. This week I'm going to start with you, Apollo. Uh. <laughs> Can you win one in your life uh. ever? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. What was, uh, it, so there was that cat, the 3-3 three, three for 3, that fights as soon as it enters. The, that's the cat, yeah, the night cat hunter. Uh, it's either that or the elk. I'm a little confused because, like, the jump start, it says predator, right? Elks aren't predators. <laughs> so I'm wondering if that's, like, horseshit, dude. But then, you know, knowing wait, me, like. Wait, where did you get predator from? Because you said you're opening up a predator pack. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to think like, you know, elks aren't predators, you know, but boars. Are boars predators? No, they just have tusks, right? Like, uh, um, mm, kind of. Oh, God, this is, I, I think it's the fucking cat. <laughs> I'm going to go with the elk. I'm going to say the elk is <laughs> horseshit. The elk is horseshit. <laughs> All right, Hoshi, what do you got for me? <laughs> He's like, I think it's the cat. It's the elk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what was the first one again? Uh, oh, um, Brindle Shoat. It is the creature boar, and uh, it's a oh, one in a okay. green at uncommon. When Brindle okay, Shoat dies, okay, okay. create a 3-3 three, three green boar creature token. Yeah, that doesn't sound familiar. Man, so many of these jump cards... Uh, they don't sound familiar at all. Oh, I know they had dogs was a thing, and they had some cats in there, and the cat sounds like a predator, but a, a flash one that fights, I don't think I've seen that, and that sounds like something that would possibly get played. So I'm going to go with the kitty. I'm going to go with the kitty. All kid right, cat. the kitty. All right, gentlemen. Oh, well, Michael loses again. <laughs> <laughs> So do I, uh, because Hoshi is the clear winner here. Because Night Cat Hunter is—oh my is, god, it's is, the fucking cat—is not oh, is not a magic card at triple green. There is no Night Cat Hunter. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, you oh. almost had it. You were like, I think it's the cat, but I'm gonna go with the elk because I'm a fucking <laughs> but, idiot. <laughs> god damn it! 
Why don't I ever trust like my uh, instincts, man? Like I'm like an elk's not a predator. Why is it in a fucking? Uh, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, and my uh, rare card thing, was uh, nothing exciting. It is um, uh, momentous fall. Which is, uh, as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. You draw cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power, then you gain oh, life okay. to its toughness, which isn't yeah, that bad, actually. I know actually. that card. Yeah. yeah um, I know that that's, card. Yeah. That's damn the next time you, you guys see me, one. you're going to see, like, you know, black Sharpie written all <laughs> over my walls, and it's just like, <laughs> all games and no wins make Apollo an angry boy. Like, <laughs> start, like, <laughs> falling into the darkness, man. Oh, dude. Or it's going to be like the studying, Pepe man. Sylvia board in the background. It's going to have pins <laughs> and, like, fucking string tying. It's like, it's all right, all Michael, like Michael made this one at this time, and it was this, but then at this time, it was that fucking Pepe Sylvia. He is a real... <laughs> It's like fucking Pepe Sylvia is on the second floor, man, and he's been waiting for his mail his whole time. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's fucking uh, bullshit. Dude. I'm tired of it. Uh, I'm tired of it. This, this is great. I love it. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey, uh, Hoshi, you got me, man. Yeah. You've been winning every single one. Good job, know, Michael. This is no crazy. good job. It's crazy. Yeah, no. Oh man! Um, so this I would is like my to, I'd like to thank Tom Cruise from the Menadorks. I am no longer part of this podcast. No. <laughs> I just can't take it's giving up. Can't take it anymore. Um, that is a horseshit card game. Congratulations to Hoshi. Um, if I can go fuck myself. Uh, <laughs> and uh, what'd you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Did you get the card right, or is it like a common theme? I think I, I'm like I'm doing this on purpose, right? You guys know that. Right? I know these cards. Sure, of course sure. I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just doing it for the memes. No. <laughs> So what'd you think? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're tuning in on wherever you get your podcasts, be sure to follow us on YouTube at the Mana Dorks and uh, give us a sub, give us a follow, uh, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Uh, with that being said, we go into our end step and that is just other shit we've been doing this week. So I'll turn it over to this week's and every week's fucking winner. <laughs> 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 I just, I just imagine you having like a cat of nine tails after this, and you're like, you're a stupid man, you're a stupid, stupid <laughs> man. <laughs> 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 So, I mean, I, I just, I finished moving out of my old place. So I'm done with it. I'm done cleaning it and everything. And, uh, man, it's such a weight off my shoulder. So now I can get this place together. My, I mean, my studio is coming along very slowly and, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just been working on my house and, and actually working. So that, that's like all I've been doing is just slaving. I feel like I just walk around. Uh, all, that's all I do. I just grab stuff and I move it from one place to another. That's like been my life for the last like week. I'm like, I put Fun. this thing over here and then I put this thing over here and then I put this thing over here and now I can get rid of one box. You know, that's yeah. my, my whole existence is, is, uh, getting rid of boxes right now. Yeah. That's nice. It, Boring. Uh, drunken. What about you? Uh, not a whole lot this week. Um, I am going to shout something out though. Uh, so I, I ran, I like ran this across, uh, these two guys. So I think, uh, starting tomorrow, today is Wednesday the second, I believe. So I think starting tomorrow, I'm going to start a new like mini series on our channel where, uh, mm -hmm. I am going to start a new magic, the gathering arena account. Um, and I'm not going to spend any money on it. Uh, I am going to use like all the free like card promos like play Zendikar 2021 whatever the fuck that you know the free you know where you get three free mm -hmm. packs so I'm going to do that I'm yeah. going to get all of the the free cards I can get and then I'm going to build uh, my aura um, historic historic deck and my plan is uh, because it's the second now so tomorrow will be the third when I do this uh, is I want to get to mythic with my budget deck <laughs> by the end of the month and um, nice. yeah I'm, I'm actually gonna try i think i'm gonna <clears throat> try really hard on this i'm gonna like do a vlog style like you know i guess vlog is what you would call it i'm gonna record it on video and then like edit it and like put up episodes maybe if i have time um because it is a lot of mm -hmm. time um yeah 
and I want to get this done by the end of the month. And uh, and yeah, and hopefully I can do this. I, I'm I'm excited to try it. Um, I I can definitely make the deck out of all the cards they give you. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. So look forward to that. Nice, oh yeah, dude. pathway to mythic, dude. Good luck on yeah. that, and uh, <laughs> we'll definitely be following you on that one. Yeah, zero um, hero. Just like that. Uh, so, as for myself, Star Wars. I, I've been watching all the movies. Um, I am, like, just mm -hmm. super into Star Wars. Mandalorian kind of, like, sparked that up into me. And, um, yeah, I just finished the prequels, 1, 2, and 3, about to start the last uh, trilogy, 7, 8, and 9. Um, see those again? I haven't seen those in a while, so it would be interesting to see. And then, other than that, just uh, just doing some games, you know, just old school games, really. Nice. And, um, like and, what? Uh, Final Fantasy. Mm. Um, like Nintendo games. Like Mario 1, Mario 3, um, you know, like the old, like, arcade classics. I have, like, there's, like, Namco, like, Pac-Man and stuff like that. There was that uh, tournament Pac-Man, that really cool, like, fancy Excuse one. Me. I don't know mm. what it's called, but where, like, it speeds up and it gets, like, yeah. crazier and crazier. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, yeah, just some old school gaming and uh, Final Fantasy fourteen again. Um, so, yeah, that's about it. Cool. So... Nice. That is our end step, and now we're going to go into our cleanup and discard. Cleanup oh, is just shit. a social media promo, so um, be sure to look us up on YouTube or um, wherever you get your podcasts at The Mana Dorks. Uh, we're also trying to make The Mana Rant a searchable term, so be sure to stay tuned for that. If you haven't, please give us a subscribe. Thumbs up if you like the video. It really helps the channel a lot. We really appreciate everything that everyone has given us feedback-wise. Um, we do this all for you, so we really appreciate it. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at the same name. And uh, with that, we go into our discard where we finish whatever we're drinking. So, um, oh, man. That, <sighs> cheers, boys, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Yeah, so, I'm <laughs>